Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. Welcome to worship. It is great to see you here and to worship together. It is great to have a worship, worshiping community online. It is, we are one body in Christ together. And whether or not our candles light, the light of Christ is among us and with us. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The, Christ, the risen Christ is with us. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Please join in the hymn of praise. Christ is number 307 in the hymnal and on the screen. be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us conf confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join now together in a moment of silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The 
The first scripture reading today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Uh, the second reading is from Acts chapter 7, 55 through 60. Uh, this uh, part of Acts refers to uh, there was a early uh, deacon of the church, Stephen, who was accused of uh, blasphemy. There was a trial in Jerusalem. He was found guilty and stoned to death. And he's uh, considered the first martyr of Christendom. And this is a, a recounting of the culmination of that trial and uh, him being stoned to death. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And witnesses laid their coats and feet at, a, at his co their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So if the children will come and join me here in the front. King David actually probably wrote this psalm, and he was praying to God, and he called God a rock, and a rock and a fortress, and a refuge. Three different metaphors, names for God. God as a rock. Why would someone call God a rock? What do you think? Any ideas? What do you think? As God controls the forest and you find rocks in the forest and you can sit on rocks, they're good, good places for, for rest. I think that's, a, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Why else? Or maybe for um, when uh, he died on the cross and they put him in that cave and then they had the guards guide him outside of that boulder that was um, taking up the stone. They, they rolled a rock in front of Jesus' grave? That, that's another I issue of a rock in, in Scripture. Absolutely. Thank you. What do you think? But, but a rock is always there, right? Yeah, and God's always there. Yeah. And a rock is solid and firm, and God is solid. We can count on that. So what about a fortress? You know what a fortress is? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, you ever build, like, blanket forts or something? Yeah. 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 You, know what a, you don't know what a fortress is? It's like a big, maybe a castle, 
with, uh, with big stone walls all around it, built up on a, on a hill so that, uh, so that you're safe from the enemy there. If an army is coming and they come up against a fortress, they can't get inside to get at you. You've got the high ground, exactly. You've got the protection all around you. And that might be why King David talked about God as a fortress, because God would protect him and protect all of us. God is like a fortress. God is like a rock. God is that strong and that secure and that powerful. But what about refuge? You know what a refuge is? Go ahead, Trey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like wildlife refuges or um, uh, nature refuge or where you protect trees and things. Did you have something, Lily? No? Okay. Did I see your hand over here? No? So I've got some pictures up here of places that might be a refuge for you, places where you might feel safe. And that's what a, a refuge is, a place where we can feel safe and secure, where we can go and maybe um, we're feeling angry and depressed and upset, and we need to go off by ourselves and feel safe. So, yep, well, the fourth one is our church, absolutely. The one on the bottom left is our church. And this is always a place, where I, I hope this is always a place that can be a refuge for us. A place of safety, a place where we feel secure. Yes, go ahead. And then yes. Go ahead. For that one, how would you be safe? Like, what if you have a mountain lion? Ah, do <laughs> uh, you mean that they're in the, in the cave? Yeah. Um, anybody have any, any ideas? So they could get lost. You could get lost. They, you could, could, could get lost. You could get, there could be mountain lions, but it's also a place where if you're in the middle of a thunderstorm, and you're out hiking, and you need some place to get away from that thunderstorm, that's a great place to be. Daddy, we can go out on a boulder, and then there's a bunch of boulders protecting you, so there's like a flood. And that, exactly, and that, com and that combines both the rock and the refuge right there. What do you think? Um, I think that the oak pie, like in that tree house, would be a great place to be. Like if there was like a, a tornado, you need to get up somewhere high, mm. so that would be a good place to be. <laughs> A, a tree house is a great place to get away. Like maybe like a, a big tree or like yep. a rock. Yep, yep. I think so. What do you think? Well, if there's thunder when it hits the tree house. <laughs> <laughs> thunder when it hits the tree house? Yeah. yeah. You've got to be a little bit, got to be a little careful going into a tree house. But, well, but that's a good place to... Is, like what if the tornado is That's why you've got to be really sure about what the weather is like to be safe. <laughs> okay, what, one more, one more. Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> go ahead, Lily. Actually we'll, we'll give, actually, we'll give Lily a chance and then Dean, because Dean hasn't had a chance. But go ahead, Lily. A person would have to run if, if there's a tornado coming to the treehouse. That's why we have to be really careful about what the weather forecast is. If there's tornadoes around, you've got to stay someplace safe. Get down in the basement. Down. Yeah, underground. That's right. Oh, yeah, Dean. Dunk, that's right. Dean, go ahead. Um, what if there's a thunderstorm and you're on a Rocky Mountain? What if there's no cave? What if there's no cave? You get down as low as you, you look for as much safety as you can. Um, that, then you just... Then, then you pray. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You pray, you prayed it, okay, okay, hey, guys, guys, okay, okay, <laughs> this is, this is all good, this is all good, <laughs> but I, I think prayer is a good answer in a case like that. Um, one of the other place, one of the other pictures up there was a picture of, we might, you might want to go to um, your bedroom sometimes when you are feeling as if you need some place to quiet down and calm down and feel safe. That room with all the blue paint, that's, that's where, that's my office and practice room at home. No, um, that's, it's not my bedroom, it's my practice room and my, and my office where I do a lot of work and, and that's, that's where I go to read and to rest and, and, and to reflect and to play music. Um, so maybe you've got places like that in your house. Yes, one more. Um, so And on top, it, it is a, and 
it ha and it's a bunk bed. Okay. So, so I'll just go on top of it. It would keep you very safe, you know, because it wouldn't collapse, would it? Yeah, because my bed is, uh, is on the, uh, is on, is up, upstairs in my house. Nice. So. All right. Well, you guys are all awesome. Thank you for participating so well today. But let's pray together. Loving God, you are our rock. You are our refuge. You are our fortress. Help us to always trust in you so that we know that we can find safety in your power and in your strength. Bless all of these children and hold them in your care and be with us always. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for being with us. Be seated, and I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Oh God, we are on this race of life and this journey of faith. Be with us. Be with us. As we walk with you, we know that we are your children. Support us. Strengthen us. Guide us. Speak deeply to our hearts. And gracious God, in these next few moments, open our ears, our minds, our hearts, and our lives that we might fully take your presence into our, into our lives, into ourselves, so that we can put these truths into practice. In Christ's holy and precious name, amen. Committing our spirits. Into your hands I commit my spirit, praise the psalmist in the midst of his life. Lord, receive my spirit, praise Stephen, as the stones are falling all around him. What is our prayer this day? The psalmist probably King David, is facing some kind of difficulty in his life, and he seeks refuge in God. He prays to God, he cries out to God, and requests, requests deliverance from his shame. He calls on God to rescue him, and uses these wonderful metaphors of rock and refuge and fortress. God is a rock, one who is formidable, one who is strong, one who is 
always there. God is a refuge, a place of safety and security. God as a fortress, one who is impenetrable by the enemy, offering protection. One scholar notes that David realizes in this prayer that he's in need of some kind of intervention. And as we read this psalm, David vacillates between cries for deliverance and statements of faith that he knows God will be strong and impenetrable, offering safety and security. Into your hands I commit my spirit. It is a statement of pure trust. He says, I'm giving myself fully to you, God. I trust you to protect me, to guide me, to strengthen me, because I can be assured of your redemption. Into your hands I commit my spirit. At times in our life, when we need an intervention, and we all have those moments, when we need intervention where our pain and our struggle and our doubt and our uncertainty seem to have the upper hand, we take heart and we find strength in the one who is our rock, who is our refuge, who is our fortress, so that we too might feel strong and safe and impenetrable through the security of the presence of God. And in that, we have hope and we have new life. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. Stephen had been serving and speaking about Jesus in the community. And some false witnesses came among, among him and actually lifted up charges against him. And yes, as Todd said, he was on trial. He was on trial for stirring up the crowd. So he was arrested and he stood before the council and at the council he offered a speech in witness of Christ. He connected the whole life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus to the history of Israel so they could see the whole pattern of God's salvation history finally culminating in Jesus. And when the council became upset that Stephen had this vision that Jesus was at God's right hand. That's a charge of blasphemy, and they took him outside the city, and they stoned him to death. But as he was being executed, Stephen prayed, Jesus, receive my spirit, and asked forgiveness upon his mur for his murderers. You might recognize that Stephen took Jesus' example from the cross and played it out in his own life. For at Jesus' crucifixion, he also offered forgiveness to not only the soldiers, but to the whole world. He also prayed, receive my spirit. So following Jesus requires some courage and some boldness, yes? Yes. Especially if we're going to take a stand for principles of unity and mercy and justice and love and peace. When we do those things, we may face indifference. We may face hostility. Following Jesus might cost us some friends, family, a job, perhaps even our life. We find our strength to be courageous through faith, which says, using the words of William Willimon, the resurrection is more than a once dead body has been brought back to life. Resurrection is a vindication that the way trod by Jesus as the Christ is God's way. Resurrection is a vindication that the way trod by Jesus the Christ is God's way. That is how we strive to live our lives, following in the footsteps of Jesus. And it does require courage and boldness that we can find in the rock and the refuge and the fortress of our God. 
into your hands I commit my spirit, cries David. Into your hands I commit my spirit, cries Stephen. Into your hands I commit my spirit, cries Jesus, when he, when he is on the cross. At the end of his life, Jesus committed his spirit into God's eternal care. Adam Hamilton posits that this prayer, I commit my spirit, was a prayer that all folks prayed um, daily. And that perhaps it is a prayer that Mary and Joseph taught to Jesus as a child as he was being prepared for bed at night. Kind of like we learned that old prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. So this prayer from Jesus' childhood that sustained him throughout his life ultimately leads him into God's eternity. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. As followers of Jesus, we commit our lives to God and to Christ when we say, I'm going to follow you. And many of us pray each and every day. We offer our prayers giving thanks to God for all of the blessings of our lives. We offer our prayers to seek God's guidance in our lives. What do I do next, God? We offer our prayers to raise our intercessions for our friends and family and those around us and for the situations around the world. At the end of the day, perhaps uh, right just before we close our eyes, we offer our prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep or into your hands. I commit my spirit. We commit our souls to God to God's eternal care that should we die in the night, we will be in God's care. But what if, what if we made that same commitment not at the end of the day, but at the beginning, or at each moment throughout the day? Would it change how we live our lives? Into your hands, I commit my relationships. And so I practiced acts of love. And I'm a little bit more patient. And I strive to be kind and offer mercy in all of our interactions. Into your hands I commit my problems. If we turn them over to God, the Spirit will help us to discern the solutions we need in our lives. Into your hands I commit my words. And so our words then will build up rather than do harm. Into your hands I commit my actions, everything I do. So when we do justice and uphold the morals and ethics that we have learned, even in the face of hostility and fear and danger, we can do so by the power of the Spirit. Into your hands I commit my eyes and my ears so that by your spirit I might see and hear the needs of others around me. Into your hands I commit my heart so that I might empathize with those whom I meet and act with compassion. Into your hands I commit my worries to the one who provides, my sorrows to the one who confronts, my struggles to the one who rescues and strengthens, my joys and my celebrations to the one who rejoices with me. Into your hands I commit my spirit. As the psalmist and Stephen and Jesus knew, God has ultimate care for our lives. And so we join in saying, my times are in your hand. God, into your hands we commit our spirit. Let your face shine upon your servants and save us in your steadfast love.
Let us come before God in prayer. Holy God, it is a privilege to be together as a family in faith. It is a privilege to pray and to offer our prayers to you, for we know that as we pray, you hear our prayers. We trust that you will act and that you will hold us forever in your care. So gracious God, hear our prayers this morning. Hear our prayers of concern for a nation and a world that continues to be in pain and struggles from um, violent acts, from gun violence in shopping malls and in schools and in places where we should feel safe, to nations at war one with the other. Gracious God, help us to value life. Help us to take action to live as followers of the Prince of Peace. For where we can change our small corners of the world, perhaps it can continue to grow and to blossom by the power of your love and your spirit. We pray for citizens who are re-entering our communities and we pray for them to have the necessities of life and to, to resettle and to have places of where, where they feel safe and comfortable, the places they can call home while they have adequate resources. We pray for our students as they continue to learn and continue to open their minds to knowledge and to understanding. Bless them as they come into the season of testing. And as we enter into seasons of prom, where we celebrate um, relationships and celebrate friendships, gracious God, help our, help our young people to, have, to make wise decisions and to be safe. Hold, we ask you to hold them in your care. We hold up those who are traveling. And we ask you to be with Donna and with Marche. Hold them carefully to hold them in your hands and bless them as they travel. Bless their times of visiting with family. Bless new birth, new births on the way. And gracious God, uh, return them then safely to their homes and to this community of faith. We pray for Hannah and we ask that you would be with her, granting wisdom and discernment as she faces the many tasks and decisions this week. Hold her in your care. We come this day to pray for those who are mourning. We hold up the Hyatt family. And as they remember Janice, we ask you to be with, to be with them. Bless them, strengthen them, and hold them in your care. Be with Ellen and the Voorhees family and Buckley family and bless them all. Hold them in your care as they remember Ellen's mom. Strengthen them by the power of your peace and love. We come this day praying for those who are in need of your healing presence in body, mind, or spirit. You know the names of folks who we have not named aloud, but folks we have named in our hearts, and we know that you are with them just as surely as you are offering healing to Megan, to Sawyer, to Andrew, to Jennifer, to Lucas, to Jean, to Mary, to Belle, to Jane. Gracious God, guide doctors and nurses and family members who bring them care and grant them wisdom and discernment to know best how to treat, how to treat their patients. And gracious God, be with each one we have named and bring healing and wholeness to their bodies, their minds, their spirits. We come this day praying in celebration and in joy. We give you thanks for the children of this church and the children of this community. We thank you for their engagement. We thank you for their energy. We thank you for their love. We thank you, oh God, 
for their, for their wisdom, for they will teach us. Loving God, continue to bless them and bless their families. We thank you for Carter and his achievements. We thank you for Naomi and her achievements. And we pray that you would bless them as they move forward in their lives. But gracious God, we do place with great thanksgiving um, the power of prayer. For it is in prayer that we come in deeper contact and communication with you. We offer the deepest our deepest thoughts, our deepest needs. And we listen for your still small voice. And we find energy to live out these lives and commit our lives to you. So gracious and loving God, hear our prayers this day and all days as we lift them up in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To a gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the blessings of our lives and we give thanks for opportunities to come and to make our offerings for the continuing work of Jesus Christ. For all those who give online, for those who send checks to the church, for those who give in person, we thank you. And this day, we, we bless these offerings.
Let us pray. God of overflowing abundance, you feed our spirits with spiritual milk and nourish our souls with heavenly food. You are our fortress and our rock when the snares of this world threaten to overwhelm us. In gratitude for your mercy and your many blessings, we offer our gifts and our ministries that a wounded world might know your grace. Amen. As we prepare, I invite you to be seated, and as we prepare the table, I would invite you to be prepared to respond to the liturgy at the appropriate moments. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, Jesus was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Mm. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we break the bread, we share in the body of Christ. And as we give thanks over the cup, we share in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion table if you have heard the words of invitation and seek to live a new life in Christ, you are welcome to receive both the bread and the cup this day. Today we will receive in, at the front of the church, the, direct, the, direct, the ushers will direct you down the center aisle. Um, I think they're going to begin at the rear of the church and work their way forward. But please come down the center aisle. You will be given a piece of bread. We ask you to take a cup. You may eat and drink as you walk across the front of the church, and there are baskets to receive your empty cups um, along the way. You can return to your seats using the side aisles. As we share in communion, we invite you to join in singing some verses of Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, Bread of the World, and Become to Us the Living Bread. The text of those hymns will be on the screen, so even if you're walking down the center aisle, you can see them. So let us come to the table of our risen Lord with joy to celebrate his presence among us.
Please join now in our prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go into this world, living and speaking his praise, empowered to do so by God our rock, Christ our redeemer, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 